I feel like, what if I don't want to go to back to work then? You know, what if I just want to stay here? You're not going to judge me. No, but what's wrong with it? I just, I, that's another thing I don't understand. The, the whole, you know, I like, and I, I've seen it quite a lot, you know, oh, well, those bums, because they're usually referred to as bums, you know, staying at home and us people that are working, we're basically paying them. So what? Mama's code. Because it's that, like, it's, it's a personal choice, ¿me entiendes? It's like, like we've mentioned, yes, there's women that want to go back to work. There's women that maybe don't want to, but need to for their mental health. And there's women that just don't feel ready. And like, no, uh, we've, we've established throughout this whole episode that it's the pressure that we don't need. So if you feel like, you know, you need to spend two years, three years with your child before, you know, because necessarily they don't need to go to nursery like by force the only time they need to go to school is when they're five years old or four I don't know four. oh yeah four you do what works for, for you as a family or for you and and your own exactly whatever you think is best for you and your child if you're a single parent or whatever the case is because I think that like for example the people that decide to just stay at home it may be as well, like, it's cheaper 100%. to have you know one parent what? staying at home. Groceries are so expensive. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's it's like a, a rent or me. someone's average salary. It's, it's, a it's lot. another rent. Maybe for you and your <laughs> husband, you just can't make the drop-off and the pick-up. So now you have to then pay someone else to pick up and drop off your child or your children. You know, it's more expense. As humans, we're creature yeah. of habits, aren't we? So we get kind of used to a routine whether it's at work or at home or whatever the case is and then now all of a sudden we're being taken out of that to try and do something else new and it it will take some time to adjust oh guys you know what it just hearing you just talk about work and like everything you have experienced and felt and it's just like I've been feeling really anxious just like I was saying because it oh there's just so much that goes on as well like for example, you're at home and you've woken up, I don't know, six, seven, whatever time your child wakes up, seven on my side. You've been up once during the night, wake up at seven, have to literally spring out of bed because we've established that children or babies don't like to cuddle. Get some breakfast, whatnot. You're already thinking, okay, what am I going to cook today? I need to clean this house. Even if it's just hoovering, mopping, whatever. For me, I find peace of mind when my child has gone to sleep and I pick up all his toys and then I can kind of focus on all right what do I need to do today let me go make lunch um x y and z things then the fact that my partner gets home and he's sometimes looks at me like what have you done all day and it's just like can I not have a break like yeah, you're going to work, but at work, you actually have a break. You can actually sit down for half an hour or one hour, how long, however long your break is, to sit down and enjoy your meal, to sit down and have a, a warm drink or whatever. But you're actually sitting down, you reading on your phone, eating, whatever it is, you've had a break. I've not had a break. Like my break was during the night. And even so, not even because sometimes the kid feels like he wants to wake up three times a night or, you know, whatever he's up to um so I don't get a break it's just an all night and all day and or like the child's crying and it's like I've dealt with you the whole day like in my head um and I say this to myself so much expectations yeah. cause disappointments yeah. but my expectations are way too high for my own like mental health because you're you're here on the weekend the child's crying the fact that you're here on the weekend makes me feel like okay now I can have a weekend so I can have a break you're here you can maybe change their nappy you can maybe say you know let me make you breakfast but sometimes it's not like that and when it's not like mm. that I just like I said I just get so angry in my head and I'm thinking like but why like just bloody do it you're here you're not working today it's Saturday it's Sunday and then I'll just rush to do things because that's just the person I am. Because I will say, for instance, can you change his nappy? And I expect it to be done like <laughs> before I even blink. 
and obviously <laughs> it's not you know it's gonna take a while okay and we're exactly because yeah. I expect so much but again that's just the person I am so then I now get up to rush to change the person's nap um, <laughs> the person the <laughs> the kid's nappy and now you're looking at me like but I was gonna do it and so I just bring myself down to fuck it I do it myself so I, uh, I just think equally it's just you're still working at home when you're with a baby it's no vacation it's no you're, you're not just sitting at home like scratching your head if anything you've got a hard job because um a few a couple of months ago I felt very guilty that my son was acting up and it was something that I spoke to my partner about and I said, I think I'm failing as a mom because I feel like I'm not setting the example for him. I feel like he's not at the stage where he should be in terms of why am I saying no? And you're not understanding. Like he doesn't even look at me when I say no. And I started thinking, I started feeling myself with so much pressure of I'm the one that's going to start implementing, like putting into his behavior, his personality, the way he's learning it's just so much to deal with that it's just, it really got to me. And I started thinking, I'm like, I'm shit at this. Like if this is him now before, like, you know, at eight months, imagine when he's one or two. And um, he said to me like, Oh, you know, obviously he's reassuring me saying I'm doing a good job. And, you know, but you just feel like, well, I personally felt the pressure of I'm raising a, a child like I'm I'm molding him into who he's going to be and I just feel like I'm not doing a good job at all and then yeah it's just got to me like really bad and now like I said like I'm sh- trying to put discipline into him because obviously you can't let them get away with everything but 100% and you think oh but they're too young they don't understand all right but you need to work they do understand. yeah and you need to work around a way that they can understand so now I'm thinking oh my god my child's gonna be that screaming child down Tesco's and he's gonna be like I'm gonna slap you mommy and then everyone's gonna look at me like (laughs) everyone's gonna look at me like oh my god she's failing so you watch mommy maybe yeah maybe I don't have schedules maybe I don't have meetings and you know projects I'm working on but I'm implementing all morals and values and discipline that's, into that's a, a soon-to-be toddler to say that work means paid work because working at home is just as hard as working when you're getting paid like going out to whatever job you do and receiving a salary a salary for it i think working at home is, is harder you know like you're saying you're molding your your molding set an example for your children um setting like the main foundation for them to grow up you're keeping the house going whether it's cleaning cooking um washing it's hard it's not easy and then on top of that let's say if you're paranoid with when they start eating and not choking that would make me so tired I remember I used to watch Maya so hard when she was eating and I would cut the food up so tiny because I was so scared that she would choke and I wouldn't know how to deal with it that is a big job. Oh my God, guys, the first time um, Leo choked, we were in boots and I had my hand full of makeup and shampoos and he was choking and I was looking at him like, oh, he's fine because he was choking, but he was smiling and like laughing. And I'm looking and the lady next to me was like, are you okay, love? Is he okay? Because he was going red, but I was talking to him like, baby, are you okay, it's lesbian? And then I'll see him like, okay, like he's fully going red oh, now. <laughs> it's about to go down. Leo's like closing his eyes. <laughs> and Jess is like, but he's still smiling. <laughs> so I've dropped everything that I've had in my hands. I've untied him somehow from, you know, his buggy, flipped him over, done the full on whack in the back. And then the cracker that he was eating just comes flying out of his throat and he cracks up and he and he just thinks it was a game and he's just like he's looking at me like do it again mommy do it again luckily I reacted the way I should have and I had a a clear mind to what I needed to do once I saw he was okay Mm. guys my hands were shaking I felt pale like my heart was literally on the floor along with my cosmetics anyways I've gone home put him to bed my partner's coming, we've sat down to have dinner and I'm 
now telling him the story and I'm like you know this happened and it was so scary but I was so proud of myself because I reacted the way I should have I didn't block myself out in fear my guy looked at me like I'm sorry what and he got so like I wouldn't say it was angry I would say because I was telling it to him like as if I was joking like I was being very jolly about it he obviously looked at me like Jess you're not taking this serious like what the hell that's dangerous and I and it just oh it just made me think like but you don't understand what it's like to feed a child and every single meal feel like I need to watch out so you don't choke fast forward he once fed him and he started not choking but you know when they have the gag reflex of that they're learning to swallow and he shat his pants basically and I was sitting there like you see like this is this is my daily job like and it start yeah and it starts <laughs> literally and it's just I think a lot of things affect your relationship when you're still at home on maternity leave because they don't spend the whole day with you seeing every single thing you do and on the weekend because they've not had you know every single day the same thing on the weekend they of course they're fresh they're ready and they have the patience for a child so they think oh this is but you yeah, don't. and they think, oh, yeah. this isn't so bad. Look, he's happy. And, of course, your child has yeah. been an angel child that weekend, and you're sitting there like, great, so. Or even if they, they, they are having their tantrums, and obviously you've dealt with, like, five days of this yeah. already, you are obviously, your patience is going to be very low. So you're going to exactly. explode, and they're going to be looking at you like. Because you're like, what do you mean it's not that bad? You haven't had it X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And it's only because you're so almost so tired of that week of having mm. you know the play ups and whatever it is and it's it's one comment and maybe it wasn't even meant in a bad way sometimes it's just banter but you don't take it as banter because you're so tired mm. <laughs> you're now both working equally oh so now you've both come yes. home and now you're both tired from work yes. still with a child you know not only with the child is it's getting home doing the dinner then you have to obviously we're bonding with with Maya. We're having time as a couple. We're putting her to bed. Sometimes I've had a rough day at work. Sometimes Dan's had a rough day at work, and it starts getting to you because before you're, before, I know for me personally, before I even get home, I'm thinking, what am I gonna cook? Did I take anything out the day before? Yes, no. Oh, I can't remember. I'm, mm. I might have to go to Tesco. I might need to buy X, Y, and Z. Whatever the case is, and like you get home. And like your husband or your partner's home and they're chilling. They're sitting. Like, oh, is there and no you're food? just thinking, what? Oh, was I meant to <laughs> teleport here and make food? And, and that and it's like, but why? Like we're both working equally. Why you've got home before me? Why didn't you start making some dinner or what like why is it always the mum that's already during her lunch break thinking, Oh, I'm just gonna go grab some potatoes? Like, why, you know, why are you the one? I know their their excuse is always, oh, I'm not as good as you, you know, I need to, like, uh, need to buy exactly what it is. Uh, I can't just look in the fridge maybe, and pick You know, maybe like, their defence, maybe they just had a day at work and they just literally just walked to, through the door two minutes before you did, just decided to sit down to take a breather and then you walk in giving it the whole, you know, why haven't you made food? And it's like, I've just walked in, but you didn't see that. No, with, with yeah. me, it's, it's, it's never been like that because I, I always get home first. But in terms of like, so I always, like before, I would always have to cook and then clean, cook, clean, cook, clean. Until I got frustrated and I was like, no, nah, I'm sorry, but like, where in my forehead does it say slave? Like, I do not get paid enough to do this. And on top of yeah. that, I get the ki- both kids. Only oh, wanting you. My mouth, my mouth. And I'm like, and like, he's right opposite me. And I'm like, do you guys not yes, see this let man? Me in front of that? <laughs> you could also call him, you know, his name is Daddy. Like, go up to him. But no, yeah, like, it's it's so annoying. So we obviously had to, like, after a few, like, arguments and stuff, disagreements, because I understand, like, like I said, like, yeah. like, like uh, Mel said, sometimes we are quick to judge, you know, or, or like they are going to do it. Like, like you said, Jess, like, you know, you ask for something, but it's not done then and there. So you kind of like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then you go, because I'm, I'm like, and you've already well. flown off the sofa, like slamming everything. Yeah. Yeah. Angry, yeah. <laughs> and they're sitting there like, fly on the wall and, and they're already thinking house, like, what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like I was going to do it. Yeah. 
yes what did, did I do you breathed that's what you did you mm. breathed yeah a hundred percent I'm on I'm both <laughs> you guys is because I, I thought I can relate so much like and then it's only when after like different arguments but not arguments in like you know we're going to kill each other but you know like strong like you, you're obviously tired we're obviously both working in you know it, there's no excuse for you to come and be like but you've been here like no. yeah and like I've literally run to both places that like, you know I've run from work to pick up our child picked up our other child and now I've come home to make us dinner you know and then you just get home and you kind of like oh, to relax like <laughs> When, when, when do I relax? <laughs> and, that's, oh, and the thing here is, we're a team. You know, I, you know we're on the same team. Before, exactly. Dan and I had children and, and well, children, child. <laughs> I was like, where's this other children I'm talking about? <laughs> Before we had my In his balls. <laughs> we always had the rule. Whoever gets in class, cook. And whoever cooks, then the other person cleans. And that's always been the rule. So if mm. I get home, I'm expecting Daniel to clean. There is, you know, yeah. unless you've hurt yourself and I can see that you're you're clearly incapable of doing it. <laughs> because oh. most of the time we kind of get home at the same time. But if he starts cooking, then I'm cleaning. And if I'm cleaning, I mean, if I'm cooking, then he's cleaning up after. And, you know, sometimes it works probably and sometimes it doesn't. Like every house I've got to <laughs> Yeah, I think it's important, like like Mel said, like having a yeah. structure. Like I, like I said, me and Ollie have finally found our balance. So like I will cook and he cleans. Like he can tell you he cleans the kitchen like five times because we just always, like, you know, I feel like the kitchen is the most like ungrateful thing in the household because it, you look at it and it's dirty and like, you've just cleaned it. So it's like he deals with that. It's, it's um, <laughs> but it, it's that you know, it's finding that structure and and it, it yeah. you know, it can take um, trial and error. I don't know. It'll be interesting when I go back to work. Mama, I love you. What about you your sex life? Like obviously, you? <laughs> you, how are you finding it? <laughs> you went deep in my vagina. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I just remember guys I don't know who it was like which one of you I was telling but like I think it was three okay. days after I had Lil I went <laughs> and gave did. Jay a blowjob to say thank you I remember when you told me this and I would look at you and I was like I cannot deal with it. I'm gonna be looking at you now and just like, oh, it was thank you. you you're so grateful I literally like looked at him and I was like thank you so much for looking after me and like he was like baby what the hell you could have actually just said thank you like it's fine um but you know it's at the beginning like I remember the the first like two days it was the whole um toll of birthing hadn't got to me so I felt like okay like you know maybe I can do some hand movements here and there mate fast forward a week I was like don't eat like honestly because I remember it came into combo like when are you gonna stop bleeding and I was like are you dumb like I'm traumatized did you see that kid head (laughs) and you know the whole thing of like six weeks after six weeks you can have sex again and it's like you've just you've hit six weeks you've just come back from the doctor and they're sitting there looking at you like so can we have sex tonight? I'm like, what? <laughs> Where does it say that I now want to have sex? But oh guys, I, d- I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, in terms of like, say, like, let, let me give an example. So like, I find it, you know, I, w- I have like really early mornings. So I'm up at six. I do my whole routine with like getting ready, getting the kids ready, breakfast. And then, you know, till five when I finish work, then again, pick up the kids, make lunch. By the time I sit down, like, you know, if Ollie I'm goes tired. for, like, a tit, like, I'm I'm just looking at him like, no, nah, babe, like, please remove your hands. <laughs> Honestly, I would, like, prefer to sleep <laughs> rather than, you know, or, like, I even sometimes suggest, I'm like, if you want to, but, like, let's just like, move a lot. <laughs> and then he just looks at me I'll, like, what? And I'm like, I'll just be know. the little spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But there are times that, you know, where the sex drive is there and you're kind of like, yeah, let's do it. And you want to, like, the hole in you to come out. <laughs> but I would say, like, 90% of the time, How about I'm a yeah. because it's, it's, it's a no from me. <laughs> Tiredness takes over and you just fall asleep. Yeah. Oh, I've had it loads. Like, you know when you sex? Yeah. And you're like, sex. yeah, I'm going to stop that dick. And then 
and then you get home and then you conked out and then they just look at you like and I've had Ollie like oh babe yesterday was great and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> and and do you know what and it, you do it today you do it tomorrow you do it on the weekend and they look at you like are you you're not taking the piss man's here waiting for you to sit on this dick and you're just like what uh I, d- I mean for me is it's kind of like I'm at home all day apparently doing nothing so he's texting me now like oh yeah can you know after dinner can I get some dessert he gets home and I'm like looking like just you know in my pjs big bun <laughs> literally <laughs> and I'm like, oh, baby, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep, and I'm yawning. And he's like, Jess, but what you, what the hell? Like, you've not been standing on your feet. I'm like, yes, but I've been doing everything around this house. Like, just because I'm home doesn't mean that I have energy for sex. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys will agree with this or what your opinions are, but what do you think by scheduled sex and having expectations? Like, do you think it's a good thing to schedule it in, or do you think it's not? Um, you you know you've been sexting all day you get home you've already have that expectation you think oh yeah I'm going to get some pussy or whatever I'm, I'm going to make love to my wife um, so you've yeah. already set that expectation or you think oh it's Friday or it's the weekend like yeah like we're going to do it and then it just doesn't happen because the other person's got tired or the other person fell asleep or for whatever reason so you've already had that massive yeah. expectation on like damn today was a day but how about if you're scheduling in sex like all right on Thursday we're gonna have sex so you're already having all the desire from Friday to Thursday so now as the woman you get a chance to shave your vagina shave your legs moisturize maybe maybe wash your hair like whatever it is that makes you feel like a sexy woman so he's already expecting like okay on Thursday where you know so you both come to the table with the same energy and you don't let each other down it it, 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 the day yeah like like you it depends on the day like there's days where like yeah I don't know like I just I don't think uh, for me I feel like it needs to it needs to flow naturally because I feel like if it's scheduled in it's kind of like you know when you're like oh I need to watch that movie and then you book a ticket to go and watch it at cinema like I just I just don't like because it's I feel like that's kind of like forced. So like we have to do it it's because it's description. within our job role. <laughs> so as a man and wife, like you have to have sex. Yeah. So I, I don't agree with that because I feel like, you know, you're not doing it out of yeah, love. You're I just doing 50, it because like, you 50, have 50, to do yeah. it. The whole, you know, if, if you're sexting during the day, then it's almost like you're planning, even though it might have been spontaneous when you first message. Um but you know and it can Mm. be kind of like you look forward to it when you're getting home and it's like yeah you know but then so that's almost like planning um but then I do get as well if you're putting it almost like if it's just a meeting let's say every Thursday at this time you know is it fun the way I I can see it working is because I like the way you're painting it out to me is kind of like you know like 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 Mel said like a meeting so you know, I get to freshen up. He gets to like shave his forehead and stuff, and come and like we sit first. in the sofa and we just kind of stare at each other. Like, is it yeah. time? That's what I'm kind of imagining. <laughs> no, but come on, guys! It's not like you guys just met. No, but, but what I mean is, <laughs> no, no, no. But that, that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of. I have in my vision, like you know, like who who makes the first move? Like, go on, you do it. I'm kind of shy today. <laughs> Whereas I feel like it will work in terms of like, you know, it is scheduled in. You do get to do the whole shebang of preparing for it. But you just, on the Thursday, whenever well, it happens, it, it happens. What, what not more like, you know, sitting down. Kind of what, like, what is yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> is that what I'm saying? You know? No, then you don't prepare, but but no, but my this point is about not going in there. We know you don't like the hair. It's made it's so uncomfortable. Am I the only one feeling uncomfortable? Melissa has exited the chat. Um, what I mean about scheduling it in is managing your own expectations. So, you know, you said, oh, maybe you sometimes you're in the mood, and he's just like. I mean, not that a man will never be in the mood, but sometimes it happens. The vice versa, it's mostly the woman that's just like, nah, I feel tired. Or like, I'm sorry, but personally, if you come in and you're like, oh my God, yes, let's have sex now. And I'm not even showered. I'm not going to, 
I'm sorry, I'm not going to perform. I'm not going to feel like, mm, because I'm very... Would you know? It depends. I can say it's definitely happened, but... This is too much. I I'm not at my deal. full potential. <laughs> this is... What, because of all the dirt on, so on top no, of No, no, no. It's just because it's like... <laughs> Like imagine I go and put my arms up and arms I've not shaved my armpit. <laughs> <laughs> oh and it's just like I can't let go because, because maybe, maybe at that point they want to I put your hands on you. Like a bloody chicken trying to hold them down. In my head. <laughs> maybe I'm putting my hands up to like hold my hair for a bit and my armpits there. Like for me personally, <laughs> the way I am. That would just be like, nah, how am I coming to, oh, <laughs> how am I coming to sex with hairy armpits? <laughs> oh, Where God. you're scheduling it in, it's like you both know that whatever has happened during your day, this is like basically like your date night. Like this is the time where it's just like, we're going to focus on this part of our relationship because we all know whether you like it or not, sex is, it may, it, you know, it's a very important part of a relationship. So mm. I just thought, like, you know, what if you schedule in sex? What mm. if you're, you know, scheduling it in and you're both coming with the efforts? Yeah, you've had a shit day, but you're doing this for your relationship as a partner, not as in, like, oh, I've had a shit day. But isn't that being forced? Because say, like, for instance, personally, if I've had, like, a really shit day, I don't want to do yeah. anything. Like, your your emotions just are all over the place. And it's kind of like, oh. And then you get home and it's like, I know he's expecting this, but my mind will yeah. be there if it makes sense. So it's 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 like you're being forced to do it basically because, like I said, it's been in the job role, <laughs> but you're not there. So is that is that all right? Because you're not like so basically you're just fucking yeah. Because, you know you're just kind of like staring <laughs> there into the days because like oh <laughs> like this is scheduled in. I have to like it's like meetings that like, when you don't want to go but you have to go. Um, Look, at the end of the day, I think sex life is a personal thing. <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes scheduling works, sometimes scheduling doesn't work, and we want to be spontaneous. Um, Guys, I need to log off. I've got sex in five minutes. <laughs> uh, it must be so I literally have. Am- <laughs> I promise you not. I will literally be livid. I will call her and stop. Like, How did you just leave us with sex? Mama's code. Um. So obviously, just we've we've touched on the pressure that you guys felt about going back to work and the pressure of being at work and missing out at home and you know explaining to the children and and just yourself. Um. You build up this expectation and you put yourself in this bubble that you can't get out of it's kind of like personally as well I feel pressure in terms of how my partner is feeling um because he may look Mm -hmm. fine and he may look like yeah I'm going out to work and he looks he looks like you know I came back home I had a great day at work or sometimes I didn't but I feel like I'm sitting here what am I contributing and do you feel depressed and do you feel pressured and do you feel like you can't handle having in your head that the whole household is counting on you going out to work and bringing in the money a a very good point because we don't actually Mm. hear that much about men who may have postnatal depression um it's mainly we always hear about the woman but it does affect the men and quite a big you know chunk of of men will say that but goes Mm. to the whole expectation of you know I'm the man I can't show feelings I need to be this this you know fictional type of strong person for my wife or my partner and now my my child or children so the alpha exactly the alpha male I must go out to work I must provide and they're humans no and and the fact that you know I've always said from the instance you leave the hospital they get literally two weeks how do you, if if us as mothers, we can sit here and say that sometimes it takes a lot of time for you to adjust to this new person. How does a father bond with a child in two weeks? Do you not think that adds more pressure onto the dad thinking, you know, Ooh, I don't really feel anything for this child at the moment or, you know, or seeing your partner deal with so much, you know, maybe going through postnatal depression and them feeling useless not being able to help you know because they have to go back to work they can't afford to you know risk losing their job because of this because obviously there's not that you know flexibility where yeah yeah you know 
you go deal with your personal yeah. problems and we'll just keep running without you. And especially because like like you said about the two weeks, that dad in those two weeks hasn't just been at home resting. They they're on broken sleep. They're on trying to make sure that the the mum is feeling fine, that the baby's fine, you know, he's probably also waking up during the night or however you're running your household. He's still on broken mm-hmm. sleep. He's still a customer but and now he's okay, two weeks is up, you have to go back to work. And now he's coming home seeing that his child has done something new that he hasn't seen. And he's thinking, oh my God, look at this, look what he's just done. And you're on this other side, like, oh, he did that last week. Um, So I think that is, it takes a massive toll on them. Um, I mean, it must feel like you're missing, I'm missing now, but I can't say that I feel bad about it. I can't say that actually I want to be here at home. And like, like Mel was saying, I'm the alpha, like I shouldn't, feel this way I should put a strong face take my chest out chin up and go out to work and I'll be all right with videos and and pictures and stories that you're telling me because I know for instance we we went on holiday um, Leo was four months and he rolled over that day that we landed and I had seen that he had rolled over but it wasn't I think it was like it wasn't intentionally of him to roll over it just so happened but then I think when we landed he actually pushed and rolled and he was so happy he was like oh my god is this he literally asked is this the first time he's done this and I just saw like how much his face lit up and his eyes and he he was so excited and I was like yeah like literally tears came to my to my eyes I was like yeah it's the first time he's rolled over and then he did it twice and then he his first tooth came out that week as well and he was like oh my god like he was so excited to see that he was there for those milestones and then when he went back to work obviously by this point Leo's trying to crawl and over the weekend he's for, not forcing him but he's like come on you can do it like crawl because he was so desperate I guess in seeing being there when when Leo hit a milestone and when he was doing something new and I think sorry I feel like with with me like I've tried to always like when I've been home I've tried to every single day and Ollie can can vouch for this like I've sent him pictures you know everything that the kids do so they can like feel like you know a little bit included into the days that we do and sometimes when I do send him yeah sometimes when I when I send him stuff he's he's like he does like it's like oh you're so yeah to spend time with them and it's like it's things like that that makes you think like wow like you know sometimes I don't actually realize that you would yeah. also want to be here in my position you know so sometimes we're or so focused. ungrateful because I know we feel this yeah like we like we kind of like just you know blur out the whole picture of you know well, yeah. we have to be here blah, blah blah but not really because we we are here because we want to because you know, there's the flexibility yes, like of, you know, that leash, what's that thing that they offer, Mel, that, you know, oh, you yes, yes. share your maternity leave. So if, yeah, so if you wanted to, you know, and you didn't want to be like suppressed with this yeah. child in your house, like you say you do, you could easily share your Pardon. parental leave with your, your baby daddy and they can stay here. Like, so it, it's, it's kind of like you selfishly wanting to live your life and go do your own thing but not also thinking yeah. you know maybe yeah. my partner actually, wants to sometimes spend a little bit of time we get so confused with the person with the kid making sure that the mother is okay after having a baby that maybe we forget the dads and it's quite scary that the yeah. nhs website actually states that one in ten new yeah. fathers become depressed after having a baby i think that's that's quite a lot of new dads and that's only the dads who are for me brave enough to to even talk about it who have come out and you know have been diagnosed with depression what about all the dads or all the mums as well who you know don't feel like they can approach whoever it is to to speak about how they're feeling you know and are suffering in silence because I think one in ten is is and are suffering in silence you know of new dads who are feeling like this and you know we all know that you know suicide rates for men are higher and they're just getting higher because of the pressure that's that's happening yeah, it's the standard that they feel like they need to meet it's like if some women feel like i can't you know like i for one think like you know if you're seen as this incredible mom 
in your partner's eyes and then you feel kind of like depressed and you feel like wow how am I going to break it to this man that sees me so high that I'm so weak inside and I can't deal with anything anymore you know and so imagine the man's pressure that they literally carry the whole weight on their shoulders you know especially like stay-at-home moms how the impact that gives you when you finally like open your eyes and you think wow like I don't take this into consideration you know I'm at home and I've had a bad day and it's all me 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 but you don't understand that your partner's come home so tired again as we've mentioned they could be having the worst day ever but they try their very hardest to leave things that's gone outside of the door and just try to you know spend that little bit of time they can with you and your child and sometimes I feel like us as partners we take it for granted I agree um because that that's happened to me I mean at the beginning of when we were parenting um you know he's walked through the door and he looks composed he's fine hi how are you and I've literally just been like I'm fine and then just stormed off and he was like okay he, he didn't say anything he just you know took it calm and then once I calmed down I was like why are you not talking to me and he was like well clearly you're not in the right state of mind to talk and I then you know after we discussed it it was he told me he had had like the worst day and I felt so bad I sat there thinking you've had a worse you know you've had a bad day because you've had to deal with people you've had to keep having a brave face during your working hours you've been at work since seven in the morning it's just 8 p.m you've come home I've had millions of breakdowns at home but I've been able to let it out of me and cry it out and sat down and mm-hmm. probably screams or whatever I've been able to have a nap when my child naps I showered mm-hmm. I kind of you know I didn't have to face other people while I'm having a shit day so it put into perspective mm-hmm. of how much like you said we take it for granted we just think you know whatever you're you're not the one here at home in these four walls locked up um but actually mm-hmm. maybe it's it's worse out there like I said like sometimes you cry and then you know you pretend like a flash yeah. in your eye but deep down like it's, it's you it's days on days that you're trying to hide this pain that you're feeling and then it just comes out like I, I, I don't know if it's happened to you that sometimes yeah. you bottle it in yeah. so much that your body has to let go and then you start crying for absolutely <laughs> I mean I give it to the big shout out to yeah. the dads out there you know you're doing amazing and often it's not said to them you know how good of a job they're doing daddy i love you imagine being a dad coming home yes and Mm. your child doesn't want you (laughs) like what erica was saying like your dad is right there you can call him you can go to him but no your child your your partner's just there like okay like i'm i'm not missed like i'm not then we've not bonded that's so sad yeah. um well Ollie Ollie felt like that with Kay because I remember with Jojo Jojo literally his about? world would always light up or was it the other way around I can't remember it was one of the kids it was child one or child two but one of them would always like Ollie would walk in and it was kind of like, oh, it's just him <laughs> so so I remember Ollie would be like this little <laughs> shit does not like me but Kay oh my god Caden yeah. hears that door Beautiful. and he's just like he sees Ollie and I'm like, you know when you can just yeah. feel the love in a kid's eyes and I think that's why like Ollie and Kay like although Kay's like <laughs> ugh, annoying but they just bond so well because it's that you know and like now that he's talking and stuff he hears that dog and he's like, yeah, daddy, daddy. And he runs off to the door. And it's just so beautiful to see because I feel like with Jojo, because I was there all the time, so we had like a, a stronger bond. So when daddy walked in, it was kind of like, oh, hello you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Or sometimes Ollie got in from work really late, so Jojo wouldn't see him. So, you know, it was kind of like that. And he probably kind of thought, oh, Sometimes I see him, sometimes I don't. It's, you know, kids like can't <laughs> put two and two together so young, so it's kind of hard for them to. Like, <laughs> and it's like, you know? kid, I, I saw you yesterday, and we were best friends. What happened today? <laughs> um, it, it's yeah. it's funny. Um, you know, you, I've I've 
again, I've spent so much time with my kid and obviously he's always going to come to me. And now with like Rona around, he, the kid like has become best friends with his dad. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, like, wow. Like yeah. it, it looks cute. And, but now like, I've, you know, come out of the shower, I've woken up or I've gone out to, to walk the dog, come back in. And he doesn't even acknowledge that I've left and come back. Like, but it's just so cute because you can see how much he's, you know, bonded with his dad um, already. And he's literally like, he sees his dad and he's like, I want to be with him. I want to sit here with you. I want what you're drinking. I want yeah. this, whatever he's doing, I want to do that. Um, oh, but then he wants to eat something and he wants to sleep. Yeah. And he's like, mama, mama. And he's just crying and he and he comes hanging on my leg like what well, best friends with your dad. Yeah, just no. don't cry over yeah. there. The first thing Maya says when she wakes up is daddy. And I love I love, you know, sometimes we're joking about it now, but I do love that relationship with with her and, and Dan because it's nice to see. I love when she hears like Erica was saying, the door opening and it's like, Oh my god, did you hear that? Like, it's my daddy, I need to run. <laughs> as soon as I walk out the door, she starts crying. I'm like, what happened to daddy? You didn't even say hi to me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go do my morning. You, you do you with your daddy. <laughs> you do you, boo. Have fun. <laughs> like it just shows how important a father figure is. Just like, I know yeah, 100%. they obviously say like a mother's figure is like the most important, but I think dads are not, Dads are not deemed, yeah, they're not deemed as They're not acknowledged. You know, like, oh, well, I gave birth to him, you know, I did this, I did that. Yeah, but you wouldn't have been get, able to give birth without his dick. So <laughs> well, what, what do we do there? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> was it a chicken, the egg? Yes, <laughs> you wouldn't be here without <laughs> his <laughs> balls. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being but yeah, shout out to all those daddies out there. 100%. You guys are heroes. Always, we like to give a little golden tip. And I think after what we've just discussed, um, it's important to remember that, you know, we're lucky to have organisations already um, in place that are, are there to, like, help working families and support parents that are going back into work or supporting families during pregnancy in the early days or even organizations that help with uh, postnatal depression be for the mum or the dad so you know some of them like Samaritans or NCT you know they're, they're organizations that are, are there to help without judge and offer that emotional support that you might need and it's okay if you do so yeah that's that's our golden tip for this episode but yeah I think that's a wrap guys Thanks. mama's cold out mama's cold all right guys yeah. Me. You're not gonna go have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to think that. All right, guys, I'm off on my scheduled sex. <laughs>